Hi, I'm Ron Polk, and this is my side-by-side -side comparison of the saw stop job site saw and the Bosch Re X saw. Oh, um, so saw stop sent me a job site saw just before they started shipping them to everybody and asked me to try it out in my shop and give them some feedback and Bosch didn't do that. But you folks have asked me the differences between the two. I went online and did a little searching to find out at least the specification differences between the two or the similarities. SawStop did send this saw to me to try out, but they didn't ask for anything in return. So all of the videos I did on them were on my own and my opinion. And they don't know that I'm doing this video either. They don't pay me, I'm not compensated by them to say anything good. What I was able to find out was mostly in favor of the saw stop. Now I have owned a number of Bosch table saws, job site table saws, not the new Reacts, the one that has the um, protection built into it like the saw stop. Mine were the 4000s or the 4100s. Um, I had two of them up to I think about maybe six or seven years ago so you got to go back that distance I haven't had anything more current than that and I replaced those with the DeWalt's so I preferred the DeWalt's because of the fence I didn't like the fence on the Bosch at least on the 4000 series they may have long changed that and that may be something of the past wonderfully made saw quality saw it just I didn't like the fence if you're gonna get a saw stop or a Bosch, if you're looking at them, you're looking at more expensive job site saws than any of the others. The Bosch is coming in at just under $1,500. At least that's the suggest. I don't know what it's actually being sold for at the um, dealers. Saw stop is just under $1,300. So I think it's like $1,499 versus $1,299. So there's about a $200 spread. The reason you might go for one of those two saws and spend that extra money is because you want the built-in protection. But before I talk about that stuff, I do want to say about the saw stop and I'm reiterating points I've made, this is the finest table saw I've owned for a job site saw. I'm not comparing it to big shop saws, big cast saws, but for portable saws, this is the best one that I've ever owned. And I've had a number of the Bosch's, a number of the DeWalt's, I've had the Makita. So of those brands, this is a serious saw from the fence to how it operates to adjustments to the solidness of it it is a it's a wonderful saw but if you're spending that extra money you're most likely doing it for the protection features so the the saw stop protects you to zero rpm the, it's a conductive thing and a conductivity thing and so that blade will come to an instant stop no matter what the RPM is. The Bosch doesn't use that instant stop, it uses a retraction. This also retracts, so this does the stop and retract. The Bosch uses a retract and that is disabled or it doesn't work below 240 RPM. So there is some potential um, with the Bosch that possibly some cut cut could happen. I, I'm not, I don't really understand what 240 RPMs is, although I've cut myself, I've nicked myself on table saw blades when they haven't been moving at all. And so because the saw, uh, Bosch saw doesn't stop the blade, it retracts it, um, there is no protection if the retraction fails. So if for some reason the blade doesn't fall, there isn't any protection. The saw stop, it uses two different types of protection, the retraction and the, the blade stop. So if the retraction fails, the, you're still protected with the saw stop. So the saw stop also has a conductivity test built into it. And I've demonstrated this in another video. So you can set it up, turning on in a certain way. It's pretty easy to do. Um, and run your material through it, a little test cut, and it will give you some lights and tell you if the material is safe to cut with the protection in place or whether you have to disarm the protection. Because you do have the ability to disarm the saw stop by turning it on a certain way. And again, I've demonstrated all of that in another video. 
And so if you are cutting a wet wood or a metal, um, you can disable the protection and then there is no protection there, but you can use the saw. And the Bosch does not have that conductivity test. So I would assume you would know what its parameters are and then do a moisture test with say a moisture meter. An odd thing, there is a, with the Bosch, there is a warning, a cartridge warning that you need to put your phone in the airplane mode. That's not true with saw stop. You don't have to do anything with your phone. So there's a, you know, there's a warning um, from Bosch and I don't have the exact wording, but it's uh, do not expose device to friction, impact, heat, flame, radio transmission, electrical storms, electrical current, or static electricity. And I would assume that probably ties back in with the, the cell phone, uh, you know, airplane mode thing. So there's something to do with their cartridges and, there, and there's no warnings on the um, saw stop. The blade raising, this is huge. And I've shown this in another video. With the blade fully retracted, one turn, one full rotation, takes the blade from completely down to completely up. One rotation. The Bosch is uh, 25. The saw stop with the cart weighs 108. The Bosch with the cart weighs 133. So the Bosch is a little heavier. And that may be something that people prefer. The number of times that the saw can have its stop capability cartridge activated is 25 times on the Bosch. And I'm not sure what happens after that. I'm sure the saw is fine. You probably, there's a, probably some kind of service thing you have to do. And it's unlimited on the uh, saw stop. The uh, cartridge cost per activation on the Bosch is cheaper. It's $49.50 and it's $69 on the saw stop. So if you do have a cartridge activation, you're gonna, it, it costs more by $20 um, with the saw stop. Change time, the Bosch is a little faster. It's, limit, it's listed as 60 seconds and this is listed as 90 seconds. This has been around, or the, this system, not this particular saw, but their stop system has been around the longest. They've been around about 11 years. The Bosch is new, so um, it doesn't have, you know, as much time under its belt. The other thing that I like, and the Bosch doesn't have this, is that the, the trunnion, everything is balanced, so there's, you're not lifting a bunch of weight. So when you turn this, this it, it's balanced and weighted, so wherever you stop it, it stops right there. Well, that's also true. There's a disc that you pull to tilt the blade. And wherever you stop it, it stops and locks. So you're not unlocking and rotating the, you know, and you know how those work. The Bosch was the same way, at least the 4000. Um, so the, the motor would just flop around while it was unlocked and then you would get it to where you want it, lock it. And this doesn't do that. As soon as you let go of the disc, and it's balanced. I don't know if you can tell by my motion here how smooth that is and it stays. And there's a big arrow here. You can see the gauge. And so when you're moving it, it's very easy to stop it right where you want, anywhere between the degrees. So you don't have to go right to a degree. The saw stop offers an optional dust collection guard and the Bosch doesn't offer it. Now that doesn't come with it, it's extra. And I have them for my, I have it for my saw and have shown how well that works. The assembly, and I assembled this on video as well, it's, it's very fast, it was mostly pre-assembled. Um, there's 14 pieces and it takes six steps. And according to what I was able to find out on the Bosch, there's 66 pieces of hardware and 40 steps. So there's a little more setup, which is only gonna impact you when you uh, first get it. So this is not an unbiased review of the Bosch. In fact, it's not even a review of the Bosch because I don't have one to test out and I haven't had access to one. So to answer your questions about comparing the two, I just looked up the specifications, which doesn't always tell the whole story. What would be really neat if somebody out there who has the Bosch saw, if they would do a video and show how it works so that People that are interested could watch my video and then watch the Bosch video. And then there may be some other uh, YouTubers out there that will have access to both the Bosch and the Sawstop and be able to have them in the same shop. I haven't found that yet, but I'm sure it's coming. 
If you like tool videos, be sure to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share it with others. Thanks for taking the time to watch. Have a great day.